Choosing the right kit as a YouTuber really comes down to what you do. What I and James do is pretty different. I am Barbster360, so I have a vlogging, a daily vlogging YouTube channel. Um, I also have a films channel because I'm also a filmmaker. I do everything film-wise from music videos, corporate videos, to YouTube videos, collaboration videos. And you do everything then? I literally do the whole array of filmmaking, basically. So we have very different channels. We've yes. got the Tech Chap and his Barbster 360 vlogging channel here. And obviously the kit we use is gonna be quite different. Yeah. You're out and about all the time. You've yeah. got a lot of different kit to me. So we thought we'd just do a little bit of a collab video talking about what we use, why we use it, and what we'd quite like if we had like an unlimited budget or something. The camera I'm always with is a G7X. And it's super good for kind of vlogs because it has the flip out screen. Um, I've got the little wind socks on there to stop any wind noise because that is like the worst thing is when you're out and about and you get home and you listen to the foot, you get that horrible wind noise. So these save it, not 100%, but enough. Is that um, good enough though from a distance? Like, is that going to pick up decent audio? Yeah, yeah, I think the audio picks up very, very nicely, no matter where you are. Even if you're in kind of like loud places, you still can hear. Obviously, it's not going to be as good as a proper mic, like a clip-on mic or a nice shotgun mic or something. For the run-and-gun style, especially for a vlog, it's just super easy and it fits in your pocket. We've basically taken all of our tech, all of our gear, put it onto a table and we just go through and just talk and discuss literally everything about it. I know lots of kind of vloggers and daily vloggers and stuff go for the bigger cameras, the kind of the DSLR size. Well, Casey Neistat famously always has his DSLR on a, on a gorilla pod like exactly, that. Exactly, the big shotgun. It looks really heavy and like annoying to carry around. Yeah, I have I try that and I do that occasionally depending on what type of video I do, but for ease and convenience and I guess price, mm. You know, something small and convenient like this, you know, shoots full 1080 at 60 frames, which is actually like... Oh, so it's not 4K. Good. Put it in the bin. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> but going back to Casey, I mean, he says, I think quite wisely, that yep. it doesn't matter what kit you have, it's whatever helps tell the story the best. You can shoot amazing stuff on people's phones now, and I always get asked the question of what would you recommend, what camera, and all this sort of stuff. At the end of the day, most people have a camera in their pocket with them Pretty good one. all the time. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. nowadays with smartphones, the, especially like 4K most smartphones shoot now. So I think if you are just starting out, just start using a phone and then you can realize why you need to kind of upgrade to other types of cameras and stuff. Yeah. But then obviously the audio quality is going to be a bit rubbish. Kind of where phones run into a bit of trouble yeah. is how to get decent audio out of it. I guess there's a good point now to mention the mic which I'm actually using is a super cheap smart lav mic by Rode and it costs about £40 on Amazon and it plugs directly into my iPhone and the audio you're hearing now is through that one microphone so that just ups your sound quality by, you know, many, many times because it just makes it so much better. It's a great way to start. Alternatively, you could use what I'm wearing, which is a Sennheiser ME2, uh, also plugged into, not a phone, but mm -hmm. this uh, Zoom H1 audio recorder. So the mic is just a three and a half mil jack, yep. like, like the one that goes same into yours. So you could actually plug this into your phone yep. and record in the same way. Uh, but it, plug, it plugs into this, records on a micro SD card. I can then take the uh, card out, put it into my computer, get the footage from the camera, and then just sync it up manually in Premiere Pro afterwards. And mm -hmm. that's actually a really great audio solution. Yeah. Like, I'm also recording this, and I'll switch to it now, on the Rode VideoMic Pro shotgun mic. And in this room, it's a bit echoey. And actually, while a shotgun mic is good for getting ambient sound, if you've got yeah. more than one person, it's not the best choice for everything. So actually, I've found this lav mic, the Sennheiser, with this Zoom H1, which can fit in the back of your pocket. All in, you're looking at about 250 quid. Mm -hmm. So it's a step up from, say, your Rode, yeah. but pretty good solution. There's lots of different reasons to use different types of microphones. That's why there is clip-on mics, mm -hmm. shotgun microphones, you know, just built-in microphones. Depending on what you're doing depends on what type of mic or situation you're going to be in depends on what kind of camera or mic you want to actually use. So this is kind of why we're explaining why we've got different cameras and mics for all these different yeah. situations, basically. And you're never going to have enough for everything. No. You, you can just have to prioritize what kind of uh, work you do yeah. more often, which is why you know James is here, because he does vlogs, running guns with a G7X. I use a, a GH4 DSLR. And well, you've got a, what's this beast back here? <laughs> so this is my main film camera, basically. 
So when I do all my kind of my big corporate type videos or my kind of more professional videos, I mainly use this for like music videos and corporate stuff. I also a direct for, I used to direct, sorry, for the Gadget Show on Channel 5. Show enough now, James. <laughs> so all of that was filmed on this one camera. And the main good thing about this is it has XLR input. So go back to mics. Yeah. You have XLR input one and input two. You have many um, settings for kind of audio and stuff, especially starting out type of person or YouTube or filmmaker won't go for something like this. Yeah. But when you get to a certain stage and you want things like slow motion, that was one of the main reasons why I went for this camera as well, is it shoots 200 frames at full 1080 which is like eight times slower than kind of real life. But then you can get that on very recent compact cameras. The Sony RX 104 and 5 does yeah. like great 960 FPS, I think it is, okay, yeah. at 1080p. So you, you know, maybe this is a touch old fashioned. What do you think? I'm at the stage now where I think that I could upgrade this to the next kind of model. But when I bought this a good few years ago, this was kind of top of the range mm -hmm. then. Um, but that's kind of, you know, technology. It's kind of, Keeps it gets changing. to a stage where in, you know, two or three years, it's kind of obsolete. Absolutely. It's still great now, but the main thing is this big doesn't shoot 4K. Whereas this Galaxy S7 does shoot 4K. Yeah, which it's, is, it's a weird which is world crazy that we live that in. That can, but this can. Yeah, but then we have to be careful to say that just because it shoots 4K doesn't, doesn't mean, mean. Yeah, I mean, there's megapixels, there's sensor size, there's exactly. aperture width, there's, that's a different video, I'm sure. GoPro. Yep. This is Hero. everyone. Everyone needs everyone needs a GoPro in their mm -hmm. setup. Yeah. I actually haven't got one. <laughs> I'm going to keep one by you. I'm going to keep this one. <laughs> what do you use it for mainly? So that is pretty much the type of camera you can just do whatever you want. So if you're you know going on a road trip and you want to get a nice time lapse, you're driving, you know you can chuck that anywhere. Put it on the bonnet of a car. Yeah. You know, strap it down, duct tape it, sellotape tape it, whatever. It's not going to break mm. within reason. Mm. And again, it shoots, you know, really nice, like slow motion, mm. full 1080 and 4K, these can shoot. So depending on, again, what you want to actually film really depends on what type of camera. Um, audio is pretty much the only thing which lets. Yeah, you're going back to like a phone in terms yeah, of needing an external kind of solution. Of yeah. Let's talk about lenses, mm -hmm. camera lenses. Yep. Let's say you've got a, uh, a GH, not a GH, let's say you've got DSLR. Yeah. And uh, you've, it's, you can buy it body only, if you want to take that off and show what a body only. So body only would literally just be the body. Lenses are something that I came to a bit later on. Glass, yeah. let's call it glass, because we know we're professionals. <laughs> so. But you can spend an absolute fortune yeah. on it. This uh, is the Panasonic Lumix uh, 114 to 140 zoom lens. This came with my, I bought it with my Panasonic GH4. I was just telling James before we started filming, I uh, recently did a uh, trip to San Francisco for the AMD Ryzen launch. I took my GH4, I didn't want to uh, put my fancy Sigma lens and Metabones adapter in my backpack because I was a bit worried about it. Turns out because it's only got a f3.5 aperture, which is relatively quite narrow, so it basically doesn't let that much light in, it's not great for low light shots, it was almost useless. And to the point where I filmed, don't tell the AMD PR this, sorry Joe if you're watching, I filmed most of what I, uh, at the stuff at the event on my Galaxy S7 because it's got a much wider f1.7 mm -hmm. aperture. So again, we've got 4K, f1.7. Great and low light. What's the, what's the? Uh, 1.8. Sweet, so, so anything under two really yeah. is so much better in low light. And so I had like 1500 quid worth of kit. Yeah. I, I had to use this. It becomes obsolete because yeah. it doesn't work in those conditions. So that was me being an idiot because I basically didn't get the, the glass right yeah. for the for the occasion. So tell me through what you've learned, what you use. Um, so I have a few different kind of lenses I always choose. Um, I absolutely love the L lens, Canon L lens. So this is the 24 to 105 um, kind of uh, zoom lens. It came with the body, the 6D you know, constant aperture as well. So it means when I zoom in, it doesn't stop down or anything. Doesn't get dark as you zoom in. Yeah, yeah, basically um, has autofocus uh, and stabilizer and stuff built into it. And I should probably mention as well, so on the Sony... Yeah, you've got a bit of a small end there, if you don't mind me saying. <laughs> <laughs> on the camera. <laughs> this, is a, this is obviously a Sony camera. All my lenses are Canon. So I actually have a Metabone speed booster, yep. which goes from Sony to Canon. So this is, is kind of depressing to actually say how much this little thing cost. Let me, uh, Mine was about 600. Yeah. Yeah, you've got the same so one. This, I'm using the same one right now on literally this. Literally that. A very scary thing to actually buy, mm. but it basically meant that I didn't have to rebuy all of my lenses. Yeah. 
So this is my Pred and Joy. It's the uh, Panasonic GH4 with what James was talking about, a Metabones XL adapter, along with a Sigma 18 to 35 lens. It's pretty expensive, this. What do you think? Do you it's, like it? It's a nice setup. It is kind of ideal for this stationary setup. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't take it to Glastonbury yeah. to, film, uh, <laughs> to film a festival. Now, what the hell is this thing under the desk? So uh, this is the Glycam HD 4000 which most people might look at that and think, you know, is this off of Transformers or something? You can something? knock out some zombies with that, I imagine. Yeah, 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 you can play like Dead Rising with it or something. <laughs> um, this is basically a stabilizer for cameras. So I put my Sony camera on here and it's all balanced like perfectly. Just do weight, there's no like gyros. No, nope. so it's all done by weight. So when I put the camera on here, it becomes perfectly balanced and you get these perfectly kind of cinematic, smooth uh, tracking shots, walking like shots. shots. Just makes everything look so much you know, you make it sound like you know what you're doing, James. Well, I try to. <laughs> <laughs> but would you prefer like a fancy gyro stabilized three well, axis thing, Ronin so, or? So since I've bought that, obviously the Ronin has come out and stuff. But the thing is with something like that, yes, it's you know beautiful piece of kit, a great bit of engineering, gets incredible cinematic shots, weight, batteries, you know. Um, just transport, just taking it to different places, how it packs down. For instance, this, I can put this in a suitcase, put in the hold of an aeroplane. You know, I just got back from America from filming on that. It's, you know, it's very rarely gonna break, but for something like the Ronin is probably gonna break if you put it in the hold of an aeroplane. And really that leads us into the fact that as YouTubers, as kind of video makers, film yep. producers, we are one man, one man bands one man usually. Bands, yeah. So uh, as if any of you guys are YouTubers, you'll know that trying to get your footage and focus, trying to get all your kit with you if you're going on a shoot, Doing it all yourself, you have to be the sound guy, you have to be the cameraman, yeah. you have to be everything. So really, you could have, you could spend a whole ton of money, get some really awesome kit, but if you can't carry it, if you can't operate it yeah. by yourself, if you haven't got a flip out screen or yeah. an app that you can use. There's lots of different stages of cameras and this hasn't happened overnight for, mm -hmm. for either of us. It's kind of like, it's a long kind of process of, you know, you buy one, then you realize why well, you need to get another one yes. and, you, and you're constantly investing. So what would you like? Let's say think, you've got a bit of a budget so going something forward. which I have always wanted and I haven't got myself yet is a drone. Yeah, that is kind of, I know everyone and, you know, everyone just shoots drone footage now because it's like very, very popular and yeah. they're becoming very affordable, yeah. more so affordable now. Even just like just the small little Mavic, yeah. just to be able to put in a backpack, you know, take off anywhere. You don't need extra accessories and stuff with it. It's just small and compact. But then you've got, there's some issues around, well, airspace, exactly. licensing. You have to have a proper a drone yeah. license, especially if you're filming in urban areas. So how about cameras? What would be your next buy if you could? Ooh, I, pretty... I'm kind of interested in the GH5. Yeah, me too actually. 4K 60. Yeah, that's kind 10 of the main color. reason. Awesome. Well, yeah. it's been awesome talking to you. Thanks yeah, for coming to awesome. uh, join me at the Tech Chap studio. It's you, incredible. It's amazing, isn't it? These screens and just <laughs> everything here, I'm just like, wow. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, James. <laughs> yes, no worries. And I hope you guys found that helpful. Thank you very much for watching. And if you've got any questions for either of us, let us know in the comments and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.